What's going on, good brother? I'm good, fam. How you doing? I'm all right, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing to have you on, man. So, you know, just want to welcome you to Time Out with Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Season two. That's Honor good. to have a, you know what I'm saying, good figure like you and the community and everything on the show, man. So why don't you introduce yourself to everybody, man? Um, I'm Doc Kennedy, the director of operations for New Haven Heat. I'm associate head coach for um, Lee Academy Prep, Knapsack AAA. And, you know. That's that's what it is. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, so yeah, man. Like I said, man, it's an honor, man. Uh, you know, you know, what I mean, I've known you for some time now, seeing your growth from a, you know, what I mean, st- student athlete to where you at right now, man. And you know, it's definitely, you know, a testament. You know, what I'm saying to what you're doing. You know, what I'm saying and stuff like that for all these you know, us minority youths in the sports in the world today, you know, so we just going to dwell into, you know what I'm saying, your life, man, growing up to where you at now. So, um, so where are you originally from? Are you from New Haven, Hamden? Where exactly originally I'm, I'm, from? I'm from Hamden, you know. Okay. okay. Like, New Haven definitely had played a part on my, my growth and success. Like, you know, New Haven and Hamden is right there. Okay. So, you know, but I'm from Hamden. I was raised in Hamden. Well, you know, I got family all on New Haven, got family in Hamden all over New Haven County. So that's okay. that's what it is. Okay, okay. So um at like, you know what I'm saying, first first and foremost, you know, how you and your 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 you know, your family, you know what I'm saying, holding up during this time with this COVID and pandemic stuff, you know, how's everybody holding up? Man, everybody doing good, you know, the family doing good. Things things definitely different, but you know you gotta adapt to what's going on right now. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. Uh, with the basketball program, with the Heat, we had to adapt to it because our kids we can't take a summer off. You know, like completely. You know, we yeah. we we definitely limited the traveling. We didn't travel. We stayed in Connecticut. We just kept trying to build film, do workouts. Um, mm-hmm. um, we had Adam Finkelstein from ESPN come watch some of the kids play. Mike Yeagerman from the hoop hustle, um, Kevin Dean mm-hmm. from Northeast Scout. So we 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 changed it up the outlook, you know, more showcases for the people, um, and just got everything with the film because our twenty twenty one class they still need they need scholarships, you know, and yeah. So we not in a situation where we could just say no AAU. Then we didn't know what the CIAC was going to do this year. So a lot of our kids from our neighborhood would have been would have been hit if we didn't reach out to coaches and still did what we had to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 So when, when did you, you know what I'm saying? No. And at what age did you start, you know what I'm saying? To realize like, yo, I, I can take this basketball and set myself up for the rest of my life as well as either a coach, a player, uh, educator of the game. Like at, at what point did you realize that? What age did you realize that? So my when I started, when I was playing basketball, my main thing was being a floor general. So, you know, I knew how to, I, I thought about the game on a higher level as a youngin. you know, like I might have might not been the most athletic or most talented, but I knew the game, you know, mm-hmm. and, that plays a big part with my father. My father been coaching forever, you know, and that's one thing he taught me, not just be good, but really be a student, watch a film and stuff like that. Um, but when I knew, I, as a freshman in high school, I told my my uh, my high school coach, Coach D, that I know I want to be a college coach or, you know, I want to be on the next level. But mm-hmm. it, really start, it really started to get to that when I got to college because me personally, I didn't love working out. I didn't love the game like I used to basketball-wise. So it's like I love the game, but I didn't I didn't love it enough that to still try to go pro or to do something like that. That wasn't in me. You know, I, I, knew, I knew that part real, 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 real soon. Um, then it actually happened when my when I my freshman year of college, my dad started coaching again with and he started going with the heat because my little cousins, Joe Pullen um, and Shimo Daniels. And they asked me if I wanted to be assistant coach. At first, I'm like. I'm 18. I'm not trying to do it right now. I ain't trying to spend my summers with, yeah, the, yeah. with the little kids. Yeah. But then when I when I started coaching, it's like this is what I want to do. You know, like I I need it. I need to do this right here. 
And it happened that my senior year, <clears throat> my head coach of college, he like, what you want to do next? And I had another year of eligibility, so I could have went back for my fifth year, but I didn't want to play no more. So he's okay. my my coach father was the headmaster at Lee Academy. He the one who started the post grad program out here. So he's like, I know it's in Maine, deep in Maine. I don't know what you want to do, but the opportunity is yours if you want it. And that's when that's when it all started on a professional level. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So anybody that's, you know, watching, whatever, y'all got any questions for Coach Doc, you know, just leave them in the comment box. I'll post them on the screen and he'll try to answer them. Um, so who 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 are some of your, your your idols coming up from you know young and like as far as playground or a family member? Like who who was you know that you looked up to? Like, hey, listen, yo, he could do it, I can do it, I want to model my game after him. Like, like who 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 was that person or or peoples that, so, that you looked up to coming up? It's two separate ones, basketball playing wise and coaching. Coaching wise, of course, my father, but then I came up in the era with um, Kerm, Stevie yeah. J. So I came in a in a hell of a time. You know, I went to Hot Shot, so I learned. Like, and that's when I knew I, I like coaching because I was watching those type of people my whole life, you know, and watching my dad. Basketball-wise, um, my brother, TJ Mathis, um, Beefy, Mike Moore, Freddie Wilson, uh, Ryan Vilmot, Tobin Carberry. So it was a lot of people, Terrell Myers. It was a lot of people – especially at that time that I looked up to basketball wise and coaching wise. And, and, and those are the people that played a, a big role uh, in my growth as a basketball player and um, in the next level. And Ryan Gomes too, and Wayne Simone. Um, okay. Ryan Gomes, especially when my brother passed, Ryan Gomes and Wayne definitely looked out for me on, on that type of type of time and bigger than definitely. basketball, you know, they, definitely, they, definitely. they was there on a different level. So yeah, we we gonna we gonna dwell into that yep. later on. Um, so when so so you being from Handum, you know, what I'm saying New Haven, right there. Like, how did how what similarities did you see as far as basketball wise? Did you you feel like Handum? You know, what I'm saying was on the same level as New Haven, or did you say, listen, I got to go over to New Haven and get all the good runs and stuff like that? Or did y'all have good runs out there and hand them? Like, you know what I'm saying? Was it, was it a difference or was it the same? Cause you know how some people, they, you know what I mean? Some people will be from like Manhattan in New York and they say, listen, we got to go to the Bronx. Yep. We got to go to the rock of the plate. Was it like that? Being from Handum, did y'all have a place like that in Handum, or did y'all go to New Haven to go get them runs and stuff like that? Um, so when I was coming up, I went to the Hamden Rec uh, with uh, Lamar Austin, okay. um, Mr. Austin, um, top, Mr. Harris, and that, that's where I went. Um, New Haven, you know, it was different out there, but a lot of the kids that was we, – we had a lot of talent in Hamden, but they end up going to high school in New Haven. But growing okay. up and going to the parks, we played with each other our whole lives. You get what I'm saying? And so we we definitely held our own and had our own different bracket of basketball players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like New Haven, I played in Farnham. You know, my AAU teams is from New Haven, so that that definitely played a part. But when we just going outside, I didn't have to go all the way to New Haven to go get a good run. I could go down the street and still have people like Lamont Omer, T.J. Mathis, like Jordan Dina. So it's a it's a whole lot of good basketball players that came out of Hamden told. Yeah. So we we still held our own. Of course, New Haven got more high schools and stuff like that. So it was more basketball players was getting produced. But we had we definitely had our own own talent on our side of town. All right. All right. So I gotta ask this. I had another New Haven guy, you know, on the show. Well, Handum guy, you know, slash New Haven on the show last um week, whatever. So I gotta ask you, man. You know what I'm saying? 860203. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I think y'all can, you know, match up or when you coming up, did you like yo listen? I gotta go to 860, man. They got them them ballers out there. Like, I gotta pit myself against them. Or you felt like you know 203 was on the same level yeah. as you know what I'm saying, the the 860. 860 definitely got a lot of a lot of good basketball players for sure. Mm -hmm. But 203, when you put New Haven, Waterbury, and Bridgeport together. 
it, 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 it gets real. You know what I'm saying? There's a, it's a, it's a whole lot of talent coming out of all three of those big cities, and we're not even talking about the outskirts. So when you hear when you hear A6O, what names come to your mind as far as like balling? You know, I'm what saying, saying? When, I, when I came up, my people was Karan Iverson, Kane. Like we, y'all definitely had a lot of hoopers, and those are my boys till this day. Um, but those are the first two that come to my mind: Dante Giddens. Um, there's a whole whole bunch, and I, I'm talking about my era. Like I don't, I know the people for that was older than me or younger than me, but yeah. Kane and Karan, Karan and Zach. <clears throat> Those are my guys, and I love their talent since day one. Okay, okay. So, you know, coming up, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, we're going to dwell into, you know, the, the AAU life. You know what I'm saying? How how was – um? did you play AAU? What was your AAU team you played for? And, and how was that – how how was that playing? You know, because you know it's different levels from – the playground to park and recs to AAU high school. So how was it transitioning from the park and rec and, and, and the middle school to now, you know, you're playing AAU basketball. Like how, how was that? So my dad put me in a fire when I was a young, young. And so I was fifth grade playing seventh grade AAU. Mm-hmm. By the time it really was my turn, I really was adjusted already. And it was a lot. It was, the basketball wasn't harder. Playing for my father was harder. Uh-huh. He always kept the level on a higher level than anybody else. You know, some people, like, when you play for your parent, it's easier. Not for me. I was calling my mom, like, Ma, I need to be in the car with you. I'm not getting in the car with my dad. <laughs> um, but I played with a lot of different programs, though. Um, ECE, East Coast Elite was my the one skills camp. That's who I played with most of my life. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Sh- Sharon, Ma, Creef, and them guys. Yep. Around my, all of them was around when I was coming up. That's who I started off with. Then I played a couple of seasons with Connecticut Elite. Uh, played a couple of seasons with um, Connecticut Select. But um, ECE was the Connecticut Kings. But well, ECE was my first team that, that I really started traveling. And, like, it was different because my dad and them, they wasn't putting us in the C division and having us win. When we was in sixth grade, they had us going to Virginia, playing the uh, Harrison Twins, getting blown out by 40. So, <laughs> so it made, but it made us look at it like we got to work a lot harder instead of yeah. we could have dominated the, the lower level, <clears throat> but we would have false confidence. And I think that's one of the reasons why we really worked harder because of them putting us in a fire like that. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Once again, man, shout out to your pops, man. Rick, man. That's my guy, man. Yeah. You know, saying the OG, man. You know, um, you know, you had good parents, Rick, Renee. Yeah. You know, you also got three siblings, TJ, uh, Donnie, and Dom. Like, how how was that growing up with other siblings? Was y'all in competition? You um, know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. And who who was the best? Who was the best? Um, we're very competitive, you know, very competitive. Basketball wise, my brother had it, but me and my sisters, we wasn't no punk. So even if <laughs> even if he thought he was getting the best of us, that's when we start filing and end up fighting or something like that. But you know, it was very competitive, and that's why I thrive in my business now <clears throat> because I was I've been competitive with my family since day one. You know, mm-hmm. so it made me get that hunger and trying to get better and better and whatever whatever I do, and I, and that's a big part and big token of my mom and my dad teaching us how to go get what we want yeah man and y'all you know what i'm saying and and um yeah man it's, it's it's always you know what i'm saying that 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 sibling rivalry man and stuff like that you know and it's always good to have that person you know pushing you you yep. know what I'm saying to be better and stuff like that and, um and it was a little different too because my mom and dad let my cousins live with us too so we would have siblings rivalry, but <clears throat> yeah. Jordan Jr. Chicken, he lived with me when, uh-huh. when for a while. My cousin Jasmine, my cousin Candace. So it was more than the siblings. We all were just battling every single time and everything we do. So yeah. it definitely made it, it definitely changed the, the aspect a lot. Okay. So now you know, did a you what was um you say was one of your most memorable moments during AU? And who was a, a tough competition for you um, as far as team and a player? Like when, when, when you matched up against this player, you was like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? Who who was that team and that player during your AAU experience? The first the first people I can think of right now is Nervous Noel and Wayne Sheldon. 
when we played on um, BABC when I worked with Select. Mm-hmm. And it showed me it was a whole different ball game mm-hmm. outside the state of Connecticut, how serious they taking it. Like they was calling Norris Noel the next Bill Russell. And he would and we, and we had a good team. We had Kane, we had Karan, and, and it was a good aspect, but it showed me that I got a lot more work to do. <clears throat> I could be one of the best in New Haven, or but it gets it gets even on another level when we play on a higher level like that. Um, but my favorite things was traveling with my teammates. Like especially with when when it was just I was playing with my New Haven and Hamden team, that yeah. we going to Florida and stuff having bonds that we can never change. You know, yeah. even the little stuff we getting in trouble for, like I would never, I do it all again. You know, because it build a relationship with some people I don't talk to every day, but if I see them at home, it's all love because we've been through a lot together. So did you see any similarities like with the, you know, cause nowadays that that's like some of the new phase, you know, guys playing with different AAU organizations and stuff like that. Did, did you feel like you got the same from the coaches at every team that you played for, or they had different styles that, you know, that, that helped you along the way and, and stuff like that, or were they, or was they similar with the teachings and stuff like that? The teachers was was different with a lot, not different, but same with a lot of them. But mm-hmm. the business aspect was different. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't like when I was playing with my New Haven team and stuff. I ain't never see too many people get cut, or yeah. and they and they did get cut, but we wasn't replacing somebody in the next tournament. So that was a big difference when I started playing on that high level. How cut though it is? Like yeah, you a kid, but we trying to win. So if you ain't yeah. cut, or I'm, and it got to politics too because sometimes. People was playing people because who they came with, not because their talent. And yeah. that's what I told like something got to change. And that's what made me want to really get into the A <clears throat> like that because everybody's saying they're doing it for the kids, but it wasn't like that the whole time. You know, our local people definitely did it for us. Then, you know, the the big companies start taking one by one out of the little companies, and now it's just a business for, uh, factor like that. And that's the big difference was the business part of the AAU scene that I didn't see before um, until I got into high school. That was different for me. Okay. Okay. And, and now what was the, you know, um, you know, like you said, New Haven got a lot of schools and, and stuff like that. When it came time to choose a school, you know what I'm saying? What was the reasoning behind you choosing the school that you went to play for for high school? Came to high, so it, it was a it was a couple different reasons, you know. My, I didn't at first. I didn't pick the school I wanted to go to. You know, what I'm saying my dad made a a, a boss move and said, "This is where you going." But yeah. his, his logic was, "That's where you live at. You gonna play from your, for your community. Yep. Like you ain't in college going to just going different places." <clears throat> yep. You know, what I'm saying you gonna go to him to high, mm-hmm. and I and, and I didn't mind that because my brother went there already. He was an all stater and did all yep. all he did already. So I didn't. Me finding the legacy was straight, and all my friends yeah, went yep, to him yep. high, so I was okay with that decision. Um, but that that was a real thing, and me playing right away, or um, having a chance to play as a freshman and play varsity basketball in the double F, double F. So I'm like, I could be my own man at him to high instead of go to other schools around the way where they trying to recruit every single eighth <clears> grade. <throat> that's good, you know, and that that made a big part for me. Yep, and now we going to do- get into the reason behind the number ten. Number 10. You know what I'm saying? We all dealt with, you know, what I'm saying tragedies in our lives and stuff like that. But like, you know, the tragedy that you, your family endured, the community endured was like, I mean, man, it was like a celebrity. Like, you know, what I'm saying, you know, passing and stuff like that, and you know. It, it touched a lot of people, like like a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've known your family for a minute now, you know what I'm saying? So y'all like, you know, family to me. So, and and it just, just hurt it. So, you know, that day, like when you got that news and stuff, like, like, like what was just going through your mind and how have you been able to deal with that and carry on, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? The legacy of your brother and, you know what I'm saying, the number 10 and stuff like that, and becoming, you know, the surrogate father, uncle to your nephew. Like, how how has that been for you from that transition? Uh, it was difficult at first because 
nobody other than my mom and dad and my sisters can't they ain't have a relationship like I did with him. You know, me mm-hmm. and him, we, we shared the same room my whole life. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So me and him have different, even with my sisters, and we got different a <laughs> different bond than a lot of people. And yeah. and I was lost. Like when it first happened, and when I was in high school, I was lost. Like I was lost for a while. Even when I was in college, I was lost because I lost my best friend. I lost my role model. Mm-hmm. I lost my idol. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have that many people older, older cousins and stuff like that. I did have my older cousins help me out, but I didn't have mm-hmm. somebody here every day trying to steer me the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to figure that part out. You know what I'm saying? I had to figure that part out and find my own happiness in myself that, and then and figure out the legacy I'm going to leave or how I'm going to keep his legacy alive. Like basketball, when he died, I didn't want to play basketball no more. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I did it because I want want to go to college for free, you know, but it, it it messed me up in college basketball because I wasn't motivated no more. So I was just on a team just to be on the team. Yeah. Um, but then my nephew, my, my nephew changed my life because I thought about so many different things, but it's like, he need me the most. You know what yeah. I'm saying? In certain situations, I, I wanted to react, but I'm like, if I go to jail, he don't got nobody. If I die, he don't mm-hmm. got nobody. So I had mm-hmm. at sixteen. I had to start changing what I how I looked at things completely because yep, of him. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I didn't need nobody to tell me like you got to step up for him. I knew that. You know, what I'm saying I felt that that bond with my brother. Like I had to do what I had to do, no matter how young I was. Like I said, and it made it easier because he got Jair got a great mother. He got great yes. mothers. He got great fathers. Like he he good. But you know, it was different with me and his bond bond different than anybody else because yeah, definitely. That, that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. it, it's my brother slash nephew slash son. You feel me? We, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. We get all those parts together, and he changed my life though because I don't think I'd be where I'd be if he wasn't around. Yeah, yeah. like he, yeah, he, you gotta you gotta have that rock that yeah. rock something body to keep you grounded, and he definitely was from you know me seeing y'all interacting, coming to the pro air stuff like that, always together. And now he's turned into one of the top you know rising players you know yeah. in the state you yeah. know. So do you see like you know you know how they say father sons like you know Jordan the greatest ever, you know his sons, I mean totally opposites of him. Yep. You know, okay. So, do you see the similarities in Jair and, and TJ, like the similarities and stuff, and where he can he has the similarities and has the greatness to even be better? You know, yeah, do, you, do you see that? Yeah, him and being him being in eighth grade and going to ninth grade, he better than me and TJ ever was going to ninth grade. You know what I'm saying, and that's not just like he bigger than TJ was and still got everything basketball wise. TJ had. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. he's also ambidextrous, so he shoot with his left hand and shoot with his right hand. So wow. he he's gonna be different. But one thing, like, <clears throat> told everybody else, he was born into this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not too many people have a choice. Like he he ain't have no choice. You know what I'm saying? Even when his dad was alive, he right there in the program as a little boy watching watching that. Then mm-hmm. now when you start when you get when he got older and start realizing like yo my dad was a a legend and I want to do this, he started taking it to the next level. And I also put that on my father too, because my father started—he put a team together for Jair um, age, you know. And I, people forget I've been going a lot, you know. The yeah. last few years I was in college, and or I'm at up in Maine, but that development plays a big part with my father, basketball wise. He played a big, big, big part, you know, working on his IQ, making it, make sure he stay hungry, and making sure he know enough is not enough. <clears throat> then when wow. I then when I come home for the summer, that's when the workouts come in. And I bring them with my older kids like Aiden Carpenter, Joe Pullen, Mikey West, um, Bigfoot, Isaiah Earl. So he's in the he's in the gym with high level basketball players at six or seven. You know, yeah. I, I had him playing in the Osgood when he was in seventh grade. You know, yeah. he, I, I put him in the fire. So that pressure is not too much for him. You know, yeah. like, I tell him, yeah. like I tell him, don't worry about the pressure, do it for fun. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what, I'm your coach, but I'm your uncle first. Like, yeah. if, you, if you say you don't want to play basketball no more, we don't got to play basketball. We can f- focus on something else. But if you mm-hmm. want to play basketball, I'm going to make sure you're on that high level where you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's where it gets so hard as a uncle and a, a coach. Yeah, yeah. That bond because I don't mm-hmm. want him beating me because of basketball. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of people, parents, 
that pressured them the whole time and that, yep, that yep. at the end it's kind of weird because you know what I'm saying all they had was basketball relationship and that's one thing that I make sure that I don't do with him to, it's just basketball like I'm your uncle first so if you feel in some type of way you call me you let me know and we handle it like that but he's definitely going to be one of the best ones to come out of the family if he if he keep working and keep doing and progressing like he been doing he should be okay 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 so you know, now, you know, your high school, you know, careers over or conference, things like that. Now, were you, you know, saying being recruited by a lot of schools coming out? And what was your decision on choosing the college that you went to? And how was your college experience playing? So I didn't have the best grades at first, you know, mm -hmm. so it, my, my, my limit. It was very limited on where I could go. So I, I had NEIAs I had to go to. I had um, D1 NEIAs. I could have went JUCO. I wanted to go to Cheshire Academy. I wanted to go to Cheshire Academy, but it was just too expensive. Mm -hmm. but, um, my coach in um, Boston, Fisher uh, Limber, it seemed like he had a plan for me other than basketball. Yeah. And then that and where I was at in Boston was downtown Boston. So. The lifestyle, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I picked that lifestyle a lot too, you know. And well, and I wasn't thinking how I think now. I do a D, I do a D three. I was a bus, so I didn't go. But yeah. not when like D three is still good. It's still everybody can't make it to that next level. So I, so I, I kind of pushed those schools away. You know, I wanted. I thought about King State because at the time King State was real good at the D three level. They was winning national championships and they wanted me. But I wanted to go to the city, though, you know, be around, around the atmosphere like mm -hmm. that, and just do something different, you know. And mm -hmm. that made my, made me go there right away, you know. Then my boy Kyle Holmes, he was at Cross, he went down to point score there. And then he went to Fisher, uh, so I'm like, okay, I, I always wanted to play with him. We we played in middle school together, so I'm like, why not? So so what's <clears throat> so what's your take? on the different levels because see my whole my whole take this is this is what i tell kids and stuff like this you know a lot of kids get caught up in you know if they go to d3 they they garbage they this they that but they fail to realize d3 basketball is typically the way it is the style of play that you've been playing all your life yeah. which is fast pace up and down division three scores are like 120 to 115 yep. versus division one and division two high schools you're in set offenses you know what i'm saying and your scores is maybe at best 98 to 76 yep. because now you got to be in a set play you got to run sets you got to run plays versus division three you up and down that's yep. the way you've been playing from street ball to aau to high school you've been up and down so you know what i'm saying like do 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 you see um like like what's your take on that whole thing you know what i'm saying and, and, and stuff like that you know because my thing is this if I could get a kid in the school, whether it's Division One, Two, Three, NAIA, you know what I'm saying? I've done my job. You know what I'm saying? It's a school because at the end of the day, you're getting that education, you're getting that degree. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people ain't going to know that you played at UConn or played at Duke. I could ask people right now, name me five people on their first national championship team. Mm -hmm. They can't tell me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what's your what's your whole take on that, you know? I'm saying – or. Every level is a different level, like you know what I'm saying. Because I look at Albertus and St. Joe's, put yeah. their team together, they got at least ten to fifteen scholarship kids. If yeah, they, if they really wanted to. Yes, so, definitely. So, so that, that, that that's <clears throat> what I'm trying to tell my because you go on D three don't mean you on a high you ain't on a high level. Yeah, um, the finals, Duncan Robinson. He went D three first. D yes, D three, and then a lot of people don't realize. Some of the 50 greatest players have played Division three ball or yep. never even played college ball. I mean, you you got, you know what I mean, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> Division three. You got Devin George, who won three championships with the Los Angeles Lakers, was a Division three All-American. Like, yep. you know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 you know? Even with the NEIA, Scotty Pittman and Terry Porter played in the NEIA. Yes, yes. They, they Hall of Famers. So, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not about where you go right away. It's about the end of the result. So, if you want to be a pro, 
even if you had a D3, you got a chance to go overseas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, know, I know D1 players that <clears throat> didn't do too much after they got out of college. And then I know D3 and mm -hmm. D2 that still playing right now. So, like I said, it's all about the work you put in. And like I said, every level, especially pros, they're going to find you if you want yeah. if you differ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. So, it's not about where you start, it's about where you end. Then we, I'm big on education. Some mm -hmm. of the degrees is the best education you could get over D1 or mm two. -hmm. The little Ivy Leagues <clears> is <throat> one of the best in the whole country. So, it's mm -hmm. like, if you could go get that type of education, why not? Because if we get hurt, or something happened, basketball all over. What you gonna do after that? Yeah. And because and, and that's one of the big things that I feel, especially where I come from, when basketball all over, a lot of our people don't know what to do after. Mm -hmm. Basketball was supposed to be just a platform to get you somewhere else higher in life. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? And and <clears throat> and that I try to teach my kids, it's not basketball or nothing. Basketball is just a way to get us to where we want to be. If you want to be a business yeah. owner, we're gonna yeah. use basketball to get you there. And yeah. it's no connections. So that that that's my main thing is like every level is valuable. You know what I'm saying yeah. every level is valuable for sure. And anybody I could get out my neighborhood and go see the world a little bit or get out go get out the state, why not? You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> why not? <clears throat> yep. Now we're gonna dwell into you know y'all program. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all been around, you know, what I'm saying for a minute and have put in that work. That time, that blood, sweat, and tears. And shout out Miss Linda, man. One of y'all biggest Linda. supporters, man. That's my lady. That's mama's, man. Shout out Miss Linda, man. You know, um, you know, what has been has you seen been the growth of New Haven Heat to come from where y'all started to now being on that national platform, having you know, every year five to six division one or two scholarship players also have some that go to high level division threes or JUCOs. Like what has been the difference and you see is the main key to getting people to come to your program and, and be successful? I'm putting the kids first. You know I'm saying about New Haven Heat. It's not just about New Haven Heat. If a hoop wave kid called me and asked me they need a favor, I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that's where we mess up as a a, a community. You know what I'm saying? We only want to look out for ours and ours only. Yeah. I look out, I look out for people since day one. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, eight eight left to go play with expressions. But when it was time to come to prep school or go to higher, oh no, nah, come on, bro. You're still my family, no matter what. And that's one thing yep. that the whole program that we. We're a family. We're a bond. So no matter what, what you going through, that's like we got a bunch of inner city kids. So they go through a lot. Sometimes they don't. They not even eating at home. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that we trying to do. Feed them. You know, we got we we don't have no sponsorships. We don't get no grants from the state or the city. You know what I'm saying? And we wanted the cheapest AAU teams to ever put um to, to play for. And that's the main thing that we try to do is for our community. That was the first thing that we wanted to do, no matter what. We happen to have been developing because even with the D1 and D2 kids, most of them been with us since seventh grade. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so yeah. Development was the main key that we just kept sticking by. <clears throat> a lot of people just do it. Like whoever good right then, that's what we ride with. Like Isaiah Earl that got all, like nine offers. I brought him to Hoop Wave in eighth grade. You probably don't remember him being there. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> not, not because he, he wasn't ready yet, but instead of uh, us giving up on him, we kept Focusing, yo, let's do this, let's do this, and we started getting. <clears throat> yeah, nah, no, I trust me, I I remember though, man. I mean, everybody yeah. came through, man. He he is definitely, you know, blossom into anything. You know, what I'm saying he is today. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you, you you got um Covington. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I remember him when he was yay high. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, man, I mean, y'all 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 definitely have been, you know one of the premier AU teams in Connecticut, you know, definitely, you know, well-respected, definitely show love, you know, yep. definitely in the community and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's, it's just a testament to you, your pops and everybody that deal with the program, man, you know, just, just being there for the kids, you know, because yep. a lot of, 
people, you know, they just get the kids for the kids. That's yeah. it. They get the kids to see what they can get out of the kid. Then after that, like, are you talking to the kid after AAU season? Are you talking to the kid before AAU season? Or are you only talking to them during AAU season? You know what I'm saying? That's the key right there. Or you, you know, know what I'm saying? The big thing, people give up on the kids way too soon. Like, you know what I'm saying? They human, so if they missing practice or something, something might be going home at home. Like, don't just give up on them. Like, you got to make sure, like, like me, I'm going to knock on doors. Like, yo, is everything going good? Like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. you know, get basketball. Like, is your life going okay? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's one thing, too. These kids, the, the, the adults now are just like, oh, they they not committed. So we don't <clears> alone. Mm -hmm. You can't give up on them. You know what I'm saying? Now you keep you, you work and work until it comes to a point. They, they just don't want to do it. But you got to give them the chance to, to grow and make mistakes. And that's one thing that we do. And as a program, we from New Haven, but we don't just dictate for the New Haven. <clears throat> like when Mikey came, we treated mm -hmm. Mikey like a New Haven kid. Mm -hmm. When Darrell came, we treated him like a New Haven kid. So it's not like – because it's certain programs, okay, we if we from Hartford or – and I'm using Hartford example. If we from Hartford, we're going to put the Hartford kids up first. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make sure they're good. That's one thing we not about. We make sure every single person – if you come into the program, I don't care if you D3. I don't care if you might not even go to college. We're going to treat you the same as the Division One, Division Two kids. And that's why I think we've really been growing as a as a, a program and people want to come play with us because they know we really for the kids. You know what I'm saying? We don't get nothing out of it. I don't get paid. For, <clears> like <throat> I, tell people, I don't get paid for the New Haven Heat. I do it because that's for my community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not my job. Like I, I, I spend a lot more money on these kids than I do for myself. Yeah. And I'm only 25. I've been coaching since 18. So it, – it, I sacrifice a lot of things and, and the whole program sacrifice for the greater good, you know, for like right now we got to pay for gym time and stuff for those showcases. But like our last new Haven, we didn't charge not one kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We not, we not about to charge you for something that we need to do and for us to help you mm -hmm, get. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing on our growth. Yeah, man, and, and and it's shown, you know what I'm saying, and also, too, want to congratulate you on the new position at Lee Academy, associated head coach, you know what I'm saying, so how has that experience been, you know, from being there to, you know, seeing the growth of your players to now, you know, you're getting a bigger role, you know what I'm saying, within the organization now, and where do you see your team going this coming year, you know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, can y'all make it all the way? You know, you got the players to do it. You got the pieces. Yeah. That's right. Like, what? what is your take on all of that? I'm saying the main, the, the first thing is Coach Dan. You know what I'm saying? Not not too many people going to trust in a young African-American <laughs> man that you never met before. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why mm -hmm. Coach Dan will always let me be me, no matter mm -hmm. what it is. You know, he never tried to change me. He let me flourishing what I do. Of course, he correct me when I'm doing wrong and stuff like that and teach me the way, but he never held me back. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with um, Lee Academy in the heat, Lee Academy got a lot of overseas kids. So when I first came out here, Coach Dan could have sent those overseas seven-footers to the circuit. Mm -hmm. but he, he let him he, – he trusted me and my program to help develop and get them to where they need to be, and that, that played a big part. You know, um, one thing he also let me do is bring my Connecticut kids in. The last last two years, I brought eight eight kids in. You know, they could have went to different prep schools, but they would have been role players. You know what I'm saying? But Coach Dan is he believed in the Connecticut kids. He let them be stars. You know, you don't gotta be somebody second man or third man. <clears throat> like Mikey West, he let Mikey West, a six foot guard that probably didn't have too many D ones or D twos on him, be the best player on the team the last two years, and he ended up. Mike West going D1. He let mm -hmm. me bring in my little cousin Joe. Same thing. Put him in a situation where he gone, He had a D1 Juco, one of the top D1 Juco's right now. Then he let me bring Aiden, Bigfoot, Cazelle, Tamim, um, Achille, um, Tyler DeWall. So he let me be me. And that's one thing that I appreciate him and the school for that, you know what I'm saying, they, they trust me. This is, my, this is about to be my fourth year, and I'm the associate head coach. I'm one of the youngest associate head coach. And the whole nap set. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that's and so how do you feel with this group that you have now versus the groups that you had in the past? Do you feel this group right here is special and could be the one that can that can get y'all there? Or 
or you know say how do you how do, and what's the differences between this group and the previous group with say you know Mikey Joel you know what I'm saying like what's the, what's the differences every every year I feel like we get better here you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying we're recruiting and the type of people that we want for our, our style of play I think this team right here might be the best team that that we have if they keep doing what they do you know what I'm saying because we we check off all the boards. We got good guards, we got good big wings, and we got good bigs. Every other year is either we got good guards, but our big men kind of, you know what I'm saying, lacking to the development at that time. Or we have a lot of good bigs, but we don't got enough wings. You know what I'm saying? This year, the roster is set up for us to go a very long way. You know? Yeah, I mean, because you got a very talented roster. I mean, you got the kid Tamin, you got – you, you know what I'm saying? You got the high flying Kazel. I mean, you got a Killy. Yeah. I mean, like that's that's three Connecticut kids right off the rip. That's just like wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? And 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 what what's been the ceilings for those three guys individually from college coaches and stuff like that? So you know, Kazel already got D1 offers. Mm-hmm. Um, Tamin and Achilles is about to start picking up even more. Like, Tamin, he's been playing great basketball. You know what I'm saying? The best thing about them coming out here that they don't got to play out of position. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't got to play the four. He's going to play the two or the three. Achilles and Tamin can play the one instead of being scoring guards all the time. Like I said, I want them to score still, but they learned how to control the team on a higher level. There's a big difference as a point guard when you got big men and big wings that you really just got to be a point guard. It's way easier, you know? And then, and then the team setup is is totally different. Like we got a couple kids from New York. That's the real deal. Uh, we got a kid named Ricky Rollins, six seven shooter uh, from Upstate. He's gonna be a a, a big big piece. Um, we got a kid named Miles from Rochester. He's gonna be a big t- piece. Like we got a whole bunch of pieces that fit together. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And one thing that I do like about them, they work <clears> hard <throat> and they're unselfish. If you work hard and you're unselfish, a lot of success is gonna come um, with that going on. Okay. Yeah, man. It's I mean, we dealt the two a lot, man. And you know, say it's definitely so what so so we gonna get off that for a minute. What's your thoughts as far as with the injustice and stuff and, and how the NBA handled that and, and the whole world handled that as a whole? What is what is your take on it and, and how are you feeling being a black minority man in this society today? You know what I'm saying and stuff like that, man. It's been going on since we was young. You know, even to this day, like I'm in I'm in Maine. Like in my part of town, I'm probably the only African American around, other than the players. So I I had to adjust completely too because I'm coming from back at home where everybody looked like looked like me. And one thing out here, even they know what's going on. You know, there's certain people that still stuck on the old ways, but it's a lot of people like Coach Dan and them that's very vocal about changing it. You know what I'm saying? Even when it comes to the sports, I feel like we need more black coaches, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. how we going to recruit kids from these communities and they don't got nobody in there that they could really connect to on that type of level. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. like, you can understand, you could be there for them, but if you've never been through it, you don't know how it really feels. So... I feel like we have more coaches, even principals, teachers. We need more black men and black women in our schools and our this is everywhere around so they can see that mm-hmm. we can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's hard to feel like, yo, I could be a, a teacher when I never had a black teacher in my life. Like, why would I go into school to be a teacher and I ain't never seen nobody do that before? So yeah. before that, it, it changes. And even with in the communities that don't got too many black people, if you got black teachers in there. The next youth is going to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to understand what's going on because they built that connection with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't blame certain communities when they look at it about, like, we just hip hop people because they only see it on the media and what they see. They don't really know us yet. So, if we got people, if we can mix the communities, communities up sometimes and start building with each other, I think it's going to be a lot of change like that. You know, I know instead of us separating, we need to start coming together and learning more. Because even when I've been here, like I said, I'm the only African American here. So the students are starting to like, okay, I, I, Coach Doc is not like what they say on the media. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They really care. He he's he's a smart guy. So it's like we got to be in there and to to make change. You know, what I'm saying yep. we can't just go away, especially when it comes to 
colleges and prep schools because there's not too many all black prep schools or all black colleges except for the HBCUs. So we need more of us coming in there and working so we can help for the for the bigger picture. Okay. So what can you so what can you tell, you know, these young kids coming up, you know what I'm saying, to prepare themselves because now, you know, they'll see um CIAC is supposed to give them back their season and stuff like that. What can you tell them to prepare themselves, you know what I'm saying, for this comeback, you know what I'm saying, to to high school basketball and prepare themselves to get ready to hopefully get seen by a school and, and or prep school or something like that. You um, know, how, how should they handle their body, stuff like that? What what advice can you give to the young student athletes that's that's coming up? Leave it all out there because you don't know when it might just get shut down again. So if mm-hmm. you got one or two games, make sure you're doing everything in those one or two games to show what you could really do. You know what I'm saying? And you only control what you can control. So don't worry about the things that you can't. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be stressed out like that. There's, you could go outside. You could go running. You could be doing your push-ups. You could do whatever you do because when that time comes, you, you're prepared. So don't worry about that much. You know what I'm saying? Then, like I said, they're going to find you. You know what I'm saying? People like me, people like you, we're going to have showcases. You're going to have the hoop race showcases. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have things that still look out for the CIAC. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I'm big on. I'm not – I'm a prep school coach. But I, yeah. I'm seeing the public schools. You know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. need those public schools. You know what I'm saying? We need everybody can't go to prep school. Everybody can't afford it. So we gotta help the 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 CIA schools and forget the CIA, see, just the students in general. Like let's mm-hmm. help them. And, and and I think we're gonna be okay. Like like I said, it's gonna be opportunities for post grad years if you're not seeing. Like I said, I got kids that's in the CIA see, that's getting taught to the D ones and D two still. You know what I'm saying? So you don't don't feel like you gotta be in a prep school to get to that level. Cause you don't yeah. have, to, you know what I'm saying, and, sure. and, and that's what it is. So, so is there any 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 players, upcoming guys you you guys are taking a look at now and stuff like that? Well, um, at Lee or yeah, yeah, Lee, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, it's definitely a handful. You know, I, it's easy for me because I got my own AU program, so I see a lot of the kids that's not even in my program. Like during AU season, like when we played job, I saw Tyshawn. Uh, Tysha and I, so it's a lot of different talent that even if I can't get them, I tell other prep schools about them. Like, I don't know if I can get them right now, but there's a kid that's going to be on the next level. Um, mm-hmm. I could tell you about some kids around my way that that I know that's going to have a real chance to go to post-grad or something, like Karan Hooks. People don't know who, who he is yet, but he go to Notre Dame West Haven, and he's probably one of the best sharpshooting big guards around right now. And I think he's going to be – a different different type of player. Um, we got kids like Ben Carroll, that's at Notre Dame West Haven, um, South Pole, six seven shooter forward. He's gonna be okay. Um, then we got a hard high academic kids like Eli Blackwell, that's at West Haven, four point four point mm-hmm. kid. So he put himself in a situation that he's gonna be good regardless. And and, it, and there's a lot more around the whole state and in our city like Sheldon Schuler, Derek Grant, Mike Green. There's a lot of good CIAC kids. That's out there still. Um, the kid from East Catholic, Brody, that boy is a killer. You know what I'm saying? Like he he he's gonna be the real deal. Like I said, it's a, it's a bunch of them that I got a whole list of like 20, 30 kids that's in the CIAC that people don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm the only one who recruited Tamin, Achille, Mikey, and Joe on that level. You know, because hell, people know him because he's athletic. People know Aiden because he played on the circuit. But the people that I brought here wasn't all all staters. You know what I'm saying? I ain't bring Mikey West wasn't an All-Stater. Joe wasn't an All-Stater. Isaiah, Isaiah Earl wasn't an All-Stater. But I could see that they, if they work hard, that their potential is going to get them to where they need to be. And that's what I said. Just keep working. It's going to come. Okay. All right. So, you know, like I said, man, definitely was an honor, man, to have you on the show picking your brain, your insight, and everything and stuff like that. And I'm going to end this like I end all the shows. Um, you need the ultimate player. You know what I'm saying? You, you, game seven, you know what I'm saying? Of the finals, you got to have an ultimate player to win the game for you. I need you to give me five players and eight abilities that you will make the ultimate player. That if this dude stepped on the floor to win, he going to win. So you could like have a pass and a, a, a stock and deep rebound and robbing. Like, who's your five players? 
and abilities that you would take to make that ultimate player. They could be NBA, college. They could be from your family, from the part, like anybody. Five players. Um, the goal for sure, Michael Jordan, just because his will. You know, like I said, there's other talented players, but he got that killer in him. So I need, I need that killer inside my player. Um, I like Kevin Durant. Um, to be mixing in with that because a seven foot shooter, you never could go wrong. And he could move like a guard. Um, so those two, Shaq, because the dominance, like I need somebody that could dominate the game like he would. Um LeBron James, his leadership. You know what I'm saying? His team, like, no matter what people say about him, his his teammates level. You know what I'm saying? They 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 know when he on the team that they got a chance to win. So I love to put him on there. And I got one more. Mm-hmm. One more. Mm. I go with uh Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? Some whoever can shoot off the ball like that from deep. You know what I'm saying? He always gonna give you a chance to win games. You know what I'm saying? Because other than him shooting, he got a very high IQ. So that was five together. I think uh I, I, I create a uh uh the, the best player ever within okay. Within okay. All right, all right. Yeah, so, man, once again, man, like I said, man, everybody who tuned in, thank y'all for watching Time Out with Shaq Season 2. My special guest, Doc Kennedy, you know what I'm saying, Coach of New Haven Heat, Lee Academy, Associate Head Coach, man. Um, You know, I wish you the best in everything you do. We're going to be talking, you know what I'm saying, every day, if not, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, Hopefully you come back on the show again later on and tell me how the season went and everything, man. And I definitely appreciate you, man, and salute you, your family, and and everybody, man. Yeah, you know, thank you for inviting me, and thanks, thanks, thank you for everything else you did, other than what what's seen. You know, man, you talk a lot about a lot outside, yes. outside the public, and I just mm-hmm. want to know, I appreciate everything that you that you did and doing right now, and keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Definitely, man. And we're going to be talking soon, man. All right, bro. Thank you. All right. Later.